everybody welcome back to another episode of shifty's 49ers talk in today's video we are going to be doing my second version or second take if you will at predicting the 49ers 53 man roster now this is still very much a situation that's fluid um, there's still a lot of moving parts here you know we have yet to play a preseason game yet there's still many practices left in training camp so but I'm gonna take a look you know take my best guess at who I believe will make the 49ers final 53 man roster let's not waste any time guys let's jump right in Let's kick it off really quickly with the special teams because there's three guys here and we know the three guys who are going to make it. So first off, kicker is going to be, of course, Robbie Good as Gold, uh, punter Mitch Wisnowski, and then long snapper Tabor Pepper. You're going to see in the bottom corner of the screen that I'm going to have like a little tracker for the amount of players. So as you'll see, as I'm rounding out my roster, you'll see where... Um, where I'm putting in terms of like the amount of players per position, things like that. But just so you guys can keep like a running tally of what we've done so far. So special teams are taken care of right there. Super easy. Now we're going to move on to the offensive side of the ball. Let's look at the quarterback position, and I believe we are going to be keeping two quarterbacks on the 53-man roster. It's going to be Trey Lance as the starter, of course, and then the backup will be veteran Nate Sudfeld. Brock Purdy, although I think he is a you know projected you know guy who can ultimately be a NFL backup, I think we'll try and keep him on the practice squad. We'll see what happens, though. Of course, look, we haven't seen preseason yet, and there's still a lot left in training camp uh, for practice is for these guys, especially for the Sudfeld and Purdy, for these guys to battle it out. Ultimately, I think Shanahan will side with having a veteran behind Trey Lance at quarterback. Looking at the running back position here, I am going to be including fullback here. So overall, we're going to have five guys here. It's going to be Kyle Juszczyk, Elijah Mitchell. I think those two are absolute locks. Uh, behind that, I think we're going to have TDP. He was a third round pick this year, so I think his spot is fairly assured. Um, Trey Sermon at this point, he's been having some really good practices too. So I believe he will also make it. And then for this final spot, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to side right, right now with Jamichael Hasty, um, but it really could go a number of different ways. Um, you know, obviously Jordan Mason, the undrafted uh, rookie free agent, he's been impressing a lot too. So he could very well make this roster as could veteran Jeff Wilson. I'm just going to stick with Jamichael Hasty because he's proven to be the best receiver of the running backs. And also we've seen him, you know, be trusted by Kyle, by Kyle Shanahan in a number of uh, big time situations, especially last year. Let's now take a look at the wide receiver group. And I'm also going to go with five wide receivers here. Debo, Ayuk, no questions about that. Jawan Jennings, I believe, is going to be there. Ray Ray McLeod, who we brought in as a free agent. And then rookie Danny Gray. Those are the five guys I'm going to have keeping. It's possible that they keep a sixth. And there's a lot of guys battling for that. I'm going to be putting out a video on the wide receiver battles that are happening in training camp. But overall, those are my five guys that are going to make the 53-man roster at wide receiver. Let's now take a look at tight end. So unfortunately, Jordan Matthews, who was seemingly impressing in training camp, uh, just tore his ACL. So he'll be out for the year. But the three guys that I have making it, it's going to be, of course, George Kittle. I believe veteran free agent Tyler Croft is going to make it. And then the third uh, tight end, maybe second, would be uh, Charlie Werner. I think Charlie Werner is going to make it right now. He's injured. Uh, not really sure the extent of the injury now. If they feel like he won't be ready for the start of the season, it's very possible that the 49ers put him on the physically unable to perform list where he does miss the first six games. Potentially there, they look to keep Ross Dwelly or Tanner Hudson. Um, but for right now, I'm going to stick with Kittle, Croft, and we're going to have Werner at tight end. On the offensive line, I am going to be keeping nine guys here, and that will ultimately have 24 guys on the offensive side of the ball. So the looking at the offensive linemen that we're going to be keeping, I think if we look at the starters, what it looks like as of now, um, we're going to have Trent Williams at left tackle. Left guard is going to be Aaron Banks. Center, Daniel Brunskill. Right guard is Spencer Burford, the rookie. And then right tackle is going to be Mike McGlinchey. Now, I do have us keeping four 
four guys behind them. It's really important to have that offensive line depth. So I'm going to be keeping Colton McKivitz. Now he is that backup tackle for Trent Williams. We saw McKivitz week 18 against the Rams last season, and he played pretty darn well. Besides for giving up one sack to Von Miller, um, there's nothing to be ashamed about giving up a sack to a guy like Von Miller. Um, after him, we're going to have Jalen Moore, second year player, someone who's shown some versatility, can play some guard, can play some tackle. So you got to love the versatility when it comes to your backups. They can fill in multiple positions. Also, center Jake Brendel, veteran guy. Should anything happen to Brunskill, Brendel can come in. He's been in the NFL for a long time. Should be a relatively smooth transition there. Last but not least, I'm going to go with Nick Zakel. So I was tempted to keep a guy like Donovan West or Jason Poe. As of right now, though, I think Zakel has a little bit more versatility. Can play a little bit of center. Can also play guard, too. West and maybe Poe could play some as well. I just think Zakel is a higher thought of prospect. Well, simply because we took him, you know, we drafted him as opposed to the other guys being undrafted. That's not to say that those guys don't have a chance. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go with Nick Zakel rounding out the offensive line. So as of now, with the offense plus the special teams, we have 27 players. So that means on the defensive side of the ball, we're going to have 26 guys, and that's going to be coming right up. We're going to talk defensive line first. To kick it off on the defensive end position, of course, we're going to have the superstar himself, Nick Bosa. Other guys I'm going to have at that spot, Samson Ebukam, who really came on strong at the end of last year. Kerry Hyder, the veteran that we brought back, had a great year with us in 2020. Drake Jackson, the rookie, he's seemingly been impressing a lot in training camp. Of course, being a second round pick, his spot is absolutely assured on the 53-man roster. Next up, Charles Omenahu. What I like about Omenahu, he's shown some versatility in training camp, actually playing some inside as well. So you like that too. And last but not least, we're going to go with Kamoko Ture. Now, it came down to a really tough decision between Kamoko Ture and Jordan Willis. As of right now, I really do like what Ture brings to the defense. Another one of those speedy guys off the edge. But it's possible that the Niners ultimately go with a guy like Jordan Willis, who has, you know, more experience in this system, special teams abilities too, clearly that we saw that against Green Bay last year, and then also can maybe kick in inside now and again with the size that he brings defensive tackle. We're going to kick it off with the two guys who are absolute locks. That's going to be Eric Armstead and Javon Kinlaw. Behind him, we're going to have free agent Hassan Ridgeway. He's got some guaranteed money there, so I think he's essentially a lock for the team. And behind that, we're going to have Kevin Givens, a really, really solid uh, inside a defensive tackle group right there. And we got good depth as well, so very happy about that. Now let's talk about the best linebacking core in the NFL, hands down in my opinion. We're going to have Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, Aziz Alshire, absolute locks to make the roster. After that, we're going to have free agent Oren Burks, can play linebacker, but is also a special teams ace, which is really, really big for the team. And last but not least, I'm going to have Demetrius Flanagan Foles. You know, he has a lot of experience in this system. He played some last year due to the injuries that we had at linebacker, so you got to feel comfortable with him out there if need be, um, plus the familiarity with the scheme. At cornerback, we are going to have seven guys here. So this was another really tricky one, but there are a couple of guys who, in my opinion, are locks. So the three guys who are absolute locks are going to be Charvarius Ward, the free agent we brought in, who's looking fantastic, as is Emmanuel Mosley. I also think Ambry Thomas is a lock. He really came on at the end of last season as well. The other guys that I have making the roster... Uh, 53-man roster. Dante Johnson, the veteran. He's a guy who's been around for a long time with the 49ers, but what I like about him is he has some versatility, um, could probably step in at safety if need be as well, so it's really good value to have a guy like Dante Johnson, and let's face it, he played pretty well in the playoffs last year too. Uh, someone else is going to be Darkies Denard. You know, he's probably going to be our starting nickelback. I think initially in the season, we're going to go with the more veteran guy in Denard over a rookie 
Mackey, like a Samuel Womack. So uh, speaking of Samuel Womack, I am going to have Womack there uh, also because I think he's going to be, you know, compete big time for the nickelback. And we actually could see him out there quite a bit when teams go to a four wide receiver set. So maybe we have Emmanuel Mosley and Charvarius on the outside. Then we have Denard and we have Womack on the inside guarding those wide receivers there. Uh, last but not least, and this was a really tough one, but I'm going to go with Diamador Lenore over Tariq Castro Fields. And really simply because Lenore has the experience. You know, he did play a little bit last year, played pretty well in the preseason. Uh, you know, Tariq Castro Fields, although there have been some very strong reports about him in training camp, I just think ultimately we'll go with the guy with a little bit more experience there. But I think this is absolutely a battle that we want to watch because uh, not only between these two guys, but just the you know entire cornerback group, especially after Charvarius and Emmanuel Mosley. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it all ultimately shakes out at the cornerback position. Then let's look to free safety. I'm going to have us keeping two guys. That's going to be Jimmy Ward and Tarvarius Moore. Jimmy Ward, we know what he can do. Big time player, super underrated. Tarvarius looking like he's back to 100% after the injury. Love both of these guys. They both have a ton of experience in this type of scheme. So got to be happy about the depth right there. And to round it off, we're going to have two players at strong safety. Talanoa Hufanga, who by all accounts has had a great uh, training camp, has been guarding George Kittle, has been coming up with interceptions. So uh, you got to love how Hufanga has been playing as well in training camp. Really excited to see him. You know, he'll probably play some in preseason, get him, him some more experience in that starting role. And then after uh, Talanoa, we are going to have free agent George Odom. So George Odom, I think, is a guy who can step in if needed to play at strong safety, but also has a ton of special teams capabilities, another special teams ace. He was an all pro uh, on special teams just a couple of years ago. So the Niners really made a concerted effort to improve the special teams and guys like uh, George Odom and Oren Burks and Ray Ray McLeod, along with the new special teams coordinator, Brian Schneider, really, really going to help out. But anyways, guys, that's my 53 man roster. Let me know what you think in the comments about my selections. Let me know where you agree or disagree. I think it always leads to a good discussion right there. I'm uh, going to have some more videos coming out very, very soon, of course. And you know, at this point, I'm going to say two things. The butt counts, and then I'm going to catch y'all on the flip side.